Alright everybody, welcome back to another Amazon FBA video. Today we're going to be talking about uh, a few different product research strategies and I'm titling this video Thinking Outside the Box. When it comes to Amazon product research, you can't just be doing the same thing everything else, everyone else is doing, you know, going on Amazon, uh, finding a product, you know, and opening up Jungle Scout and just sifting through data or using um, one of their research tools that help just create or, or look at products everyone else is looking at. Because if you're doing the main methods, then um, you're seeing what everyone else is seeing, who's trying to sell on Amazon, um, and it can kind of be misleading. So if you decide to find a product and you know a hundred other people found the same thing using the same ideas, then you're all going to be kind of rushing to launch that product. Um, but this is a little different, right? So I have four parts to this video, basically creating a touch list. Now this is actually physically going into stores um, and looking at products, you know, if you're in looking at the beauty category, right? So like face masks or anything like that, you can actually go into a store like Target and then physically pick up their packaging, look at it, look at the product, feel it, um, see what you can model after because when you have the product actually in your hands it's a lot easier to um, get ideas in terms of how you can do differentiate with your branding uh, maybe the size material color if you want to sell like a pack of five instead of a pack of one uh, and I'll actually give an example of that in a second and then part two is going to be um, you know something similar is just buying and analyzing Amazon competition now, I've done this when I was um, looking for more products to sell. I saw what people were already buying with my product and I wasn't offering it, so I just bought that and had it shipped to me and then checked it out, looked at their packaging, looked at the product, used it, uh, and kind of figured out a way to create my own spin on it, my own branding, and uh, launched something very similar. So another, another version may not be helpful with everyone. Uh, in point three here is Alibaba supplier feedback. So um, if you're talking to a supplier, uh, another thing I've done is ask them, you know, so what other products do other buyers use from you? Because they're not the, you're not the only customer that they have, right? They're going to have a bunch of other people who are selling in brick and mortar stores or other Amazon sellers who are doing something really similar to you. And they can give you really good feedback. And I actually have launched a product based on a recommendation they gave and it did pretty well and it is doing pretty well here. Um, and then, so verifying the market on Jungle Scout, right? So fourth and finally, once you find like an idea of a bunch of products that you could sell, you actually touch them, go into stores, look at them, get creative ideas, how you can do packaging, branding, change it, differentiate it. Uh, maybe buying, you know, step one, two, and three, checking those out and then actually analyzing the numbers so supply demand price weight all of that you can use uh, a software tool like jungle scout to actually see if it's a feasible idea all right so number one so i'm going to give you guys an, uh, an example here so the touch list right so actually i was um in target with my family last week and we were just kind of walking around um checking stuff out we had lunch and then we went into the beauty category, the beauty uh, section, right, with my sister, uh, looking at makeup and uh, face masks and stuff like that. And I found a product kind of similar to this, right? So this is um, like a, their body wipes, right? And I picked it up. I looked at it. I was like, wow, this packaging is really cool. They had like um, reflective uh, silver kind of holographic packaging, which really caught my eye. And that's cool for, um, you know, just like building authority and catching people's attention. Uh, if your packaging looks really good, like in this example, it looks premium, then uh, that'll really, really help and go a long way for customers to actually uh, be attracted to your product and wanna buy it. Um, so going into a store, uh, looking at products, whatever you're looking at, toys and games, if you wanna go in that section, get ideas, look at how they do their packaging, start thinking like a seller basically, uh, not like a consumer. And say, oh wow, this is cool. Like that, this this company is uh, doing this kind of. They're doing selling in packs of three, 
and maybe the, the it's like a scratch and sniff or or something similar where it's like interactive right um so going in and actually touching products and creating like a list maybe you bring a notepad maybe just on your phones your phone using the note app and uh looking at what uh, is actually out there in terms of products and seeing how you can do something similar put your own spin your own brand and see if it's actually possible to sell it on Amazon uh, so it's also kind of like talking about the touch list what products do you already use right what what do you already use on a day-to-day -day basis and why so kind of analyzing it from a different perspective of if you're actually gonna sell it so say okay like this material is good like a, this plastic drinking cup right uh, I like this, but um, it's it's kind of flimsy up here, maybe, or um, maybe insulated. You know, use a different material or change the design so it's it fits better in your hand. So if you're thinking like an actual seller, and um, actually have the product in hand, then it's a lot easier to differentiate and come up with something new. Um, so it also helps with creativity, right? Design. But, you know, modeling after what people are already doing. That's the biggest thing. Because if you're trying to create something from scratch, uh, you're just kind of like coming up with ideas in your head. You don't know what already works. Why don't you just look at what other competition is doing, um, model after them, right? Um, and then put your own spin on it. That's how, that's how a lot of uh, brands work. And that's how you cut out a lot of the guesswork. So that is super powerful, actually coming up with a touch list and going into a store and uh, checking out the products there. So uh, buying and analyzing uh, Amazon competition products, I've done this, right? Uh, where I bought an Amazon competitor's product, I looked at it, I used the product, I checked out the packaging, their instructions, and um, got ideas from that and just modeled it and put my own spin on it and my own brand and I'm able to compete actually better than they are. So look at their packaging, branding, instruction, and features. Uh, make a list of things that you can improve or change. So right. So that last image was a one pack, and they sell they're selling it for six dollars, five ninety nine there. But a three pack, um, you can charge more money, and actually the seller fees are actually usually lower. Uh, interestingly enough, for a larger quantity and a higher price. So you actually have a higher margin. Uh, so coming up with ideas like that, how you can change it um, and create your own spin, and seeing what they do well and what what could have done they done have done differently. So if you look at the reviews for that product, uh, look at the one and two star reviews. People are saying like, oh, this is a good product, but you know they only have 20, 20 sheets per pack here. I like, I wish there was a bigger amount, right? And that's maybe why they did a three pack uh, to kind of um get those different kind of customers who want a larger order all right and then third maybe not as important for some of you but alibaba supplier feedback that's just another way you can come up with product ideas right so if you're already selling this item right uh face wipes or body wipes then you can ask the supplier whoever you use on alibaba usually um and you can ask them all right so what what else do you have that's very popular what else are our um, are you supplying that people are buying and selling on Amazon because they have lists of people I've even asked that or um, suppliers have just shown me literally the image and the packaging and everything of other competition and brands and they're like yeah we have this 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 customer is using this item they're also uh, put an order in for this which is uh, kind of interesting just to be able to see the behind the scenes of what other products and manufacturers are are ordering and then maybe that's a good market for you to look at but always be looking at the numbers through Amazon through Jungle Scout or whatever software you use uh, so that's just a good way to get ideas and then um, spying on seller stores now I've had a video of this in the past where you look at a product and it's like okay this is a good product what, what else do they, are they selling so step one I'll actually just go into this um, on Amazon as well but you click on their seller profile so sold, sold by um, this company you click on that and so filled by Amazon then you go into their products over here and then boom you pull up Jungle Scout on everything that they have 
everything that they're selling. So this is one brand, right, of of this of this manufacturer, and you're able to look into their listing, look at their other products, and see across the board what are they selling. Um, and this actually looks pretty good. So if you have an average of a thousand sales a month and only 135 reviews average, that's pretty good. Uh, that's that's a good amount of demand and a low, moderately low competition. All right. So then once you actually find the product, you know you have your test, your touch list, come up with an idea, maybe look at it a little bit, um, come up with an ideas of how you can change it, improve it, brand it. Then you're gonna want to verify that that information on Amazon uh, using software. Uh, so you can check out the numbers. So you just model after what other sellers are already doing, right? We don't want to reinvent the wheel. We just want to use what already works and improve it or put your own spin on it. That's that's really the best way to go about selling on Amazon where you take out all this guesswork. Uh, and then in terms of what you're looking for using that software, right? You want to see a price point, retail price, what you actually sell it for of at least $15. Anything cheaper than that is this you won't make any money, right? If you're selling a product for five dollars on Amazon, you know, seller fees and the pro the cost of getting it there is gonna basically leave you with zero dollars margin. And then reviews, you want to see less than a hundred a month across the board for whatever product. If you're doing those face wipes, you type in um, cleansing face wipes on Amazon, you pull up Jungle Scout, and then you see out of the top 10 listings, um, how many of them have less than 100 reviews? And we wanna see most of them having less than 100 reviews, just meaning the competition's low. But then you also wanna look at sales, so sales per month, um, at least 300 a month, so that's 10 a day. Um, and then less than a pound usually is what you want your product to be, and then fits in a shoebox. So, so for this cup, definitely less than a pound, maybe an ounce or two. And then definitely fits inside of a shoebox. That just means it's small, it's light, and then the fees are going to be pretty low. Uh, and then, so once you have all that kind of figured out, you want to start thinking like a seller. So you want to change your perspective from, you know, a consumer to an actual producer or a seller. So how can you improve this product? Well, how much do you think this costs? How much does it cost to ship? What can you do in, in terms of branding? How can you offer something different or unique? Uh, and then go home and check it on Amazon. So that's kind of the overview and the rundown of kind of thinking outside the box in terms of product research. So let's just um, actually go into, so you find this product, right? You go you go into Target and uh, or Walmart or whatever, and you find this the these wipes, right? And then you're going to scroll down here and come over here and it says sold by Bliss World LLC and fulfilled by Amazon. So you're going to click on that, right? You click on that, it'll take you to their storefront. Um, and then you go into products right here. And then once you click on products, I think I already had this tab open, it's going to be the same thing. Um, so this is their store. This is uh, so one through 16 of 55 results from this this store this uh, brand and you can look at all their products see they're all in the same kind of um, beauty or personal care yeah beauty and personal care uh, niche selling very very similar products um, and then you can just pull up jungle scout or whatever software you use I, I'll put a link in the description below it costs I think $50 a month um, you absolutely need a software tool otherwise you're just gonna be guessing you have no idea how much this product is making so all all of their um, all the results here right so you start with one idea of those wipes wherever they were and then you actually go on Amazon check it out sometimes they'll be selling in Target and Amazon and then you'll be able to look at all the other products they're selling so this brand selling all these different products here and maybe the wipes were too competitive right um, but if you scroll down oh this only has 55 reviews and they're selling about $5,000 a month worth. So you can look at that. Or uh, this only has three reviews and they're selling $3,500 per month in this. So you can kind of look around, not just you start one place and then you work your way through that. And the, the more loops you jump through, the more hoops you jump through, the less competition you're gonna ha have. You're gonna be digging deeper and deeper and niching down more and more. And not everyone is gonna be looking at the same thing you are. Uh, like this. So 
Uh, I hope this video was helpful, guys. Um, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.